What's up, what's up guys, and welcome to the 61st Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video is going to be taking a look at what happens to fragments during a configuration change. All right, and mainly, mainly when, when the user changes their orientation on their device. So we took a quick look at what happens to the fragment in the previous video, but let's take a look at another look at it just in case we missed it. So we have our fragment right here, fragment one, and we have an edit text inside of it. So if we go ahead and change this to just, just whatever, to its non-default content. Well, what happens is if we actually change the orientation, what Android does is it actually destroys the activity and recreates it. And therefore, since the fragment is is dependent upon an activity, it is it, it is its host. I mean, the activity is the fragment's host. The fragment therefore destroys itself as well and then recreates its view. So we can demonstrate that here. Notice that what happened was the actual, the content that I put in, you know, if I put in some, new content and I do another orientation change, it'll keep going back to its original view, right? So that's not something that we want because if we had a whole bunch of edit text or we had a form, maybe some images or whatever, and the user changes the orientation of the device, everything is also is all of a sudden reset and nothing's saved and they have to enter in all the information again, making them very angry and probably give you some bad reviews on your uh, application. So. Uh, this is definitely something that you want to take care of. So we're going to go into a few situations in which you can, how you can do so. And there are many ways they, these definitely aren't all of them, but I'm going to show you some popular ones and we're going to, um, then you can choose for yourself, which, which one will work best for you. All right. So let's go ahead and start writing this. Now, the first thing is what if you don't want, like, what if you don't want your application to change at all? You only want it to be in portrait mode. There's, there's a lot of applications that only support one, one landscape or landscape or portrait, only one orientation. And that's perfectly fine. And what if you only want to support one? And and that makes perfect sense. So what you can do is you, you can actually set this in your manifest, but you can also do it on a per activity basis. So in our activity, our main activity, inside the on create, what we can do is we can actually request an orientation. And then what we can do is just to say portrait. So we only want we only want to support portrait and that's it. So if we go ahead and run this, what's gonna happen is if we do a configuration or an orientation change, really nothing's gonna happen and we don't lose any data because nothing happened. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So if we come into here, we can actually change our data again to whatever. We'll do an orientation change. And notice that nothing happened. So our data is still there, but and yet our, our application didn't actually, you know, uh, change to give a user a better, a little more friendly view. But some applications just simply, it just wouldn't make sense for it to ever be in landscape or maybe it doesn't make sense for it to be in portrait. So this is uh, some things that you might wanna handle and it's actually just obviously one line of code. So that's one way of course, is maybe you just don't wanna support it. So, you know, that's always fair enough. So now of course to say many applications of course do want to support both portrait and landscape. So what we'll do is we'll go on to the, to the next uh, little fix and then what we can do there is we can actually just simply ignore the configuration changes. And the way that we can do that is we can set up here inside of Xamarin allows us to actually manipulate the, basically the manifest through, through the activity, okay? So on another, on a per activity basis, what we can do is we can do configuration changes. And then we can do screen size and then we can also do a orientation there it is so these two will now allow basically you're saying that on the configuration changes simply ignore ignore the orientation change and the screen size change all right so now what we can do is we can go ahead and run this and we'll, we'll add a few breakpoints um, to illustrate this. Usually the, if you don't, the on create and the on create view, like we saw on the last video, is actually called again to recreate the fragment. This is in the fragment class now. So what happens is it won't be called again now that we're ignoring it. So let's go ahead and, and illustrate that now. All right, so it pulls up, it, it actually creates the view. That's normal initially. And 
we can change some data just to get a better uh, just get a better example of this and we'll change the orientation and notice that it has now successfully been uh, it's been saved the instance of it and notice that these these are not called so if we were to run this again without without the other without the declarations up here which so this is one way to do it guys if you want if you want to just simply ignore some of the configuration changes you can do so but let's get rid of them let's go back to where it was before and let's run let's run this guy again and we'll see took out a little too much and we'll see what I mean by um, how it's called again so this these two methods are called of course, the life cycle. Remember that we we took at the lock, look at the fragment life cycle in the last video, and we've seen that this is called and this is called and a lot of other methods. But these are just really two main ones. We'll see that it's actually recreated. And remember that when we did the orientation change the last time we ran it with those declarations on the activity, that nothing happened right here. But notice that when we now do a configuration change, these guys are called, and because they're called, that means that the whole fragment is actually being now recreated and we're back to square one to uh, it becoming back to its default content all right so that's another way to do it is simply just to ignore it and to add those declarations here on the top like I just did a few moments ago now but what if what if you what if you want to actually let Android do its thing and then recreate the activity and you know maybe you don't want some stuff to maybe you want to actually lay it out because sometimes you do want to lay out some things differently or you want to change some things depending on what mode they're in, landscape or portrait. So you actually don't want, you want it to actually, you know, there's there's more things you can take advantage of when they're in landscape mode because you have a wider screen where portrait is not as wide but it's longer. So if you don't want to ignore those changes but you still want to actually to keep a lot of that content for the fragment, then the third alternative is the one that you're probably going to want to be using. And I'll show you that here, um, how to demonstrate, I'll show you how to do that now. And the main thing is really when you, the way you actually declare and, wait, and then how you add these fragments to the container, which is remember what we do, we do right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm actually going to simply just get rid of, of fragment two and fragment three, since we're only dealing with one fragment right now, so these ones we're not really gonna be dealing with in this case. Therefore, just kind of make things a little easier on us and we won't have to worry too much about that. So I'll just comment out this code. That way we can still use it if we want. So we just have one case where we, where we have fragment one, whatever. We're really kind of just worrying about something else entirely now. All right. So now that we have this, now what, what can we do guys to save the instance of the fragment? And it's really actually quite simple. What you want to do is before actually declaring a new instance of the fragment one, you want to check from the support fragment manager if something like that already exists. And notice that here, remember remember when we're actually adding the fragment to fragment one, we're actually giving it a tag. Remember, remember right here, it says um, string tag. So what that tag is for is where we're actually going to be using it. So that tag tags the, tags the fragment with a sort of ID that can later be retrieved and what that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now so let me actually illustrate that and maybe it'll become more clear if it hasn't yet so what we're going to do is we're actually going to say okay remember remember this on create happens when the activity is recreated or when it's created initially okay so it's going to happen once initially of course and then when it's actually going to we're going to orientate we're going to change the orientation this is going to get called again this whole method so what we're going to do is we're going to say okay well support fragment manager and we'll say get fragment and we're actually I'm sorry not get fragment we're actually going to do fra find fragment by tag and then we're going to give it the, the tag that we gave it when we first initially created it all right that's right here and we're going to see if it does not equal null so we only want to actually get this fragment if there actually is something that existed because the first time Remember when this is called, this is going to be null because nothing has been created and nothing's been added here yet, right? 
but this is going to happen a second time around, there may be a possibility that we saved something. Otherwise, it's brand new. So we'll do what we'll do here is we'll bring that in there. And then what we'll do is add the transaction because this right here means that that there are no fragments. There are no fragments in the container because fragment one is really the only one. Of course, if we add two and three, you're going to have to change around your code and, and add support for those fragments as well. But this hopefully will give you, give you a good idea of what's going on. So now this means that there are no fragments in the container. So we want to create a new fragment and then we want to actually add it to the transaction and put it in the frame layout. And then we want to keep track of the current fragment. However, what if there are already, there, there's already an existing frag, a fragment. So right here we check to see, okay, well, if it does not equal null, then there must be something inside of this fragment. It found something. So then what we'll do here is we'll actually do, okay, we'll do sub fragment manager find fragment by tag, fragment one, and there you have it. So this returns a fragment. Of course, ours is extending from or inheriting from a fragment right here, right? So what we do have to do is we will have to cast it. So we can just do as fragment one, since we know it's gonna be of type fragment one because that is what its type is. All right, so let's go ahead and step through this code a little bit and see what's going on when we actually run it. And then there, that, that way we can further demonstrate and see what, what's really, you know, where the magic's happening, all right? So we're gonna set a breakpoint right here. And let's go ahead and make sure this is working and see if we didn't miss anything and if it builds properly because we did delete some stuff. All right, that looks good. Okay, so it first comes into our if statement right here and it checks to see if there's already an existing fragment with the tag fragment one and there shouldn't be, which is exactly what it is because this is the first time it's running. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna instead now create a new fragment of type fragment one, add it to the frame layout, update all that stuff. Fragment one gets created, it's view, and looks like we're in good shape. So what we're gonna do now is the user's gonna come into here and change some stuff, add some input, do whatever, and then now the configuration is gonna happen. All right, so notice that this on create gets called. Now it comes back into here, remember this is where we started, this is the main activity, because the main activity has been now destroyed and now it has been now recreated. So therefore, what happens is it comes into here and it sees that if there was something added, which we did add it here. So what it should do is come into here, which it does, it's no longer null. And notice that it now has a, it remembered that there's something of fragment one, there's a, of a tag fragment one. And what we do is we now grab that instance. And that instance has the what, what the user has changed. And then now fragment one, it remembers what fragment one is and it kept, keeps all of its data. So then it comes into here, returns the view, and there you have it. So now our fragment is now remembered by the Android system and therefore it's stored inside the fragment manager and we can retrieve it by a tag that we give it when we initially add it to the layout, all right? So this is a really handy way to do it, guys, is uh, just to simply kind of tag it like we do so here and then retrieve it. But first check to see if there's something that exists. If there is something that exists, retrieve it. Otherwise, create a new one, and there we have it. So let's go ahead and have the breakpoints all kind of, let's, let's get rid of those, and let's just make sure that we're we're in good shape here without the breakpoints. And this seems to be, for me personally, like, like a simple way to do it. And there are other ones you can use, save instant state. If you want to just save a few things in the, in the instant, you, can, uh, uh, you guys should also take a look at retaining the instance of a fragment, but there are some things that can kind of, you know, pretty memory intensive there, so there, you, that's something that you want to, maybe kind of be cautious about. But there are some other ways to do it, guys, and, and I just want to make a quick disclaimer about that since, you know, if you do find other ways, uh, that's great. So, I mean, I just wanted to point out a few different ways to do it, um, and that hopefully one of these work out, works out for you. So, there we go. I mean, now, here we go with no breakpoints. I mean, we change it, and all the data stays there. Change it back, the data is still there. 
So notice that it's actually remembering the fragment and it's reusing the fragment that it already created instead of creating a whole brand new one. All right. So that is pretty much the, uh, I guess you should say the basics of the configuration changes with a fragment and just kind of how to deal with them and kind of hopefully give you a heads up on, on, you know, you might have everything worked out and then you change the orientation and everything disappears. Don't freak out. This is a, a fix and there are many others that you can actually implement to, to do that. Android does take care of you. You just have to do a little extra work to, to get it working and give your users a really smooth experience with your application. All right. So if you guys do have any questions, of course, please put them below there. The project is the link for the project is below. If you guys have any questions, just, just feel free to ask, uh, you know, do my best to, to make some more videos. If you guys are still having some trouble with this or maybe I didn't explain it well enough, just, uh, let me know as always, if you uh, did like this video, thumbs up, really like to see that. And uh, if you guys haven't just subscribed yet, please do so. It really helps my channel grow. And, um, of course, when you do, I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, I'll do my best to answer any of your guys' questions that you may have for this video or, or any others, all right? So thanks for watching, guys.